It's been called the storm of the century. We've got coverage of the aftermath of Sandy. And are you set to graduate? We've got details on how to be sure you'll get a diploma. Those stories and more on Today at Chat State. Hi, I'm Adam Newell. And I'm Samantha Young. So Adam, how was your Halloween? Well, I didn't get any candy, and I didn't spend the night in a jail cell, so I guess I pretty much broke even. That's good. Students got into the spirit of Halloween at Oktoberfest yesterday, and Malaybay Roots rocked the amphitheater while student clubs sold various treats and showed off their school spirit. Scary Clowns won the costume contest, and the media club shot several zombie attack scenes for their short film. A good time was had by all. It was not a night for treats for many residents in the areas hit hard by Superstorm Sandy. Millions are still in the dark, many stranded in their homes. President Obama toured the area earlier today to see the damage firsthand. Chris Welch is live in Manhattan with the latest. I promise, I promise, you're gonna be okay. You will not be forgotten. That's the message President Obama carried on a tour of storm ravaged New Jersey Wednesday. When you see neighbors helping neighbors, then you're reminded about what America is all about. You know, we go through tough times, but we bounce back. And the reason we bounce back is uh, because uh, we look out for one another uh, and we don't leave anybody behind. With the blue skies on Wednesday came a clearer picture of the damage. From the twisted remains of the iconic Seaside Heights amusement park on the Jersey Shore to the Rockaways in the New York borough of Queens, ravaged by both flooding and fire. This is his only house. He, this is what he's saying. <laughs> And we're all so close here. So one loss is a loss for everyone. Absolutely. In lower Manhattan, an attempt to create at least the appearance of business as usual, Mayor Michael Bloomberg rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange, where trading was halted Monday and Tuesday. But with flooded tunnels and power outages still clogging transit, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says there's a long way to go before the city and the state return to normal. This is a long-term recovery and reconstruction effort, and that's the way we need to think about it. The back-to-work rush turned into a transportation nightmare. It's insane. Like, we knew it was going to be bad coming in this morning, but we didn't know it was going to be this much of a standstill. I want to give you a brief update now on the transit systems here in New York City. We've been talking a lot over the last couple of days about the subway systems that were hit really hard with a lot of floodwaters. Those will resume a very limited service schedule on Thursday morning. Now, we not all trains, not all tracks, but a very limited schedule. Um, they're urging folks to use a lot of extra time, use extra caution when getting around the city. Also, uh, LaGuardia Airport is set to open Thursday morning. That's in addition to JFK and Newark that were both opened Wednesday morning. So we now have all three major airports in New York City open. Reporting from the east side in Manhattan, I'm Chris Welch. So did you know anyone affected by the storm? I had a couple of friends in New York and New Jersey that I kept up with on Facebook. That's unfortunate. Check this out. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park has its autumn colors covered with a winter snow. Hurricane Sandy collided with a cold front and dumped up to 20 inches of snow in the mountains. Currently enrolled students will be able to register for classes beginning Monday, November 12th. If you haven't spoken with your advisor yet, now is a good time so you'll be ready to register. Also, students planning to graduate in fall 2012 should know that they need to take an exit exam before they will be able to receive their diplomas. Also, for students graduating in the spring, the deadline to submit intent to graduate form has been pushed back to January 31st. Any students interested in the study abroad programs next summer should start applying now. On Friday, October 26, members of TENSIS, the Tennessee Consortium for International Studies, converged on Chattanooga State for a conference, and students got an opportunity to learn about the study abroad program at displays in the amphitheater. Trips overseas usually last about three weeks, and courses offered count toward a variety of degrees or can fulfill general education requirements. For more information, visit tncis.org. Now let's take a quick look at the weather. Here's Matthew Johnson. It's going to be cold with highs and low 50s until Saturday when it warms up to 70 and gets sunny. Rain on Sunday, then back to cold weather all next week. Back to you. Thanks, Matthew. Well, that's it for today at Chat State. Be sure to check us out each week online and on Comcast Cable 3. Have a great day.